moving on to the next segment is uh, the weekly news of the week uh, in the redundancy uh, department. Yeah. <laughs> the news actually is pretty cool. Um, so I don't know if you remember way back to our first episode of the week, we talked about the upcoming uh, rule book for 5th edition, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, uh, which I believe comes out on November 17th. We still got about, I don't know, three weeks or so to go. But uh, the big rule change there, uh, we only just got information about this week, which is character ancestry origins. Uh, so as you all know from making characters with us a few weeks ago, uh, when you pick your ancestry or your race, uh, that comes with certain bonuses. That includes, uh, you know, if you're an elf, you could get spells. Uh, or a tiefling come with some spells. Uh, dwarves have... Uh, extra armor proficiencies or extra hit points, depending on which con you pick. Uh, but every ancestry comes with a bonus to stats, a plus one, plus two, uh, usually to specific stats. Um, so the big news that kind of came out of Tash is they were going to customize that somehow. You know, you could make a dwarf, but it might not necessarily be stuck with constitution. It could have different stats because, you know, much like humans, everybody's a little different, right? Um, so the big news is if they came out, Wizards of the Coast came out and they said, realistically, those specific stats, dwarves having constitution, elves having decks, have nothing to do with game balance at all. Just had to do with the fact that that's the way D&D has been done since first edition. It was just carrying that kind of legacy forward. And they realized at this point in time, you know, that legacy can go away now. No one really cares. Um, so... What they'll do is you can still pick a dwarf or an elf, like a mountain dwarf, um, but instead of, for example, if you pick a wood elf getting plus two to dex and plus one to wisdom, you get a plus two and a plus one to put wherever you want, along with the rest of the remaining typical wood elf stuff. Right. That makes sense? Makes sense to me. But it's, but it's not just a blanket plus one, plus two. Like, for example, if you pick a mountain dwarf, they get a plus two to constitution and a plus two to strength. <laughs> So in the new rules, you still get a plus two, go, plus go. two to put wherever you want. Oh, okay, gotcha. So it's a little time what, more accessible. Yeah. So what they did was they 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 basically came out and said the balance of the the different ancestries has doesn't really matter what specific stat each ancestry gets. It has to do with the number of stat points they get. Because like the thing with a mountain dwarf is they get the plus two to con, plus two to strength, but they get light and medium armor proficiency so typically when you're going to use that uh most classes have that anyway so it's usually redundant right which is why they get the plus two plus two makes sense right now on the flip side of that if there are any i think there's some magic the gathering races that just get just a plus two they don't get any plus one they would just get the plus two to put wherever they want which okay. is pretty neat yeah i like i just like that it's uh you know that it's kind of opening everything up to what the player wants at the end of the day it's not going to be game breaking at the end of the day it's it's if you want to do that if that's interesting to you to to make a i, mean, mm -hmm. I think the idea that, or the example we came up with back in when we first talked about tashes uh was the orc wizard i think it was yeah right like, i'd love to do do an orc wizard because that'd be fun that would that would stimulate the the rp our pay uh which is french <laughs> for role play uh, <laughs> yeah, stimulate the 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 role playing, um, uh, you know, prompts and 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 inspiration and creativity as well to have that. Like, why are why are you, you know, different than what you traditionally have been? So, uh, you know, for for those people that have been playing D and D for a very very long time and creating characters for a very very long time, um, you kind of maybe have done all the things that you want to do. So mm -hmm. why not now? Um, you know, do something that, that you've never done before and, and was never available before because of the rules, the restrictive rules there. So, well, exactly. And like, let's be honest. I mean, if you know, you base it on, uh, humans in fifth edition are very open. You get feats and you get plus to all the stats. It doesn't really matter. And really all they're doing is they're opening up the rest of the ancestry or races to kind of do the same thing. Right. Yeah, um, definitely. But it's not just stats either. Uh, you also can pick whatever languages you want. So if you, for example, like you're an orc. So if you make an orc, you know common and you know orcish. Uh, in the new rules, you could pick any two languages you want. Like you could be an orc that was raised by elves. That's why you're magical. 
So instead of strength, you have your intelligence, and instead of knowing Orcish, you'd know Elvish. Why not? Yeah. Um, you can also, so you can change your stats around, you can change your languages around, and in a more limited way, though, you can change around your proficiencies. So, like I said, for example, if you pick a mountain dwarf, you get uh, proficiency with medium and light armor. Uh, in Tasha's, there will be a table, and we don't know exactly what this is going to look like yet, but there's a table of you can trade this proficiency to a different proficiency, but it, it won't be open-ended. Uh, the example they gave was like, if you're an elf, you get proficiency with long swords, but maybe a, instead of going to battle practice, you went to music lessons. So now you get proficiency with your loot to get performance or your proficiency on port performance effects, as opposed to proficiency with sword fighting. Yeah, no, I really like that. Actually. I like that, that as an option, um, because you can, you just gives you more opportunities. Because at the end more of the day, more options, more opportunities. Yeah, and at the end of the day, if you've if you've been doing it enough and for long enough, you're going to run out of options. <laughs> sure, one hundred percent. And they were very clear to say too that this is all optional too. Like if you want to make a bog standard dwarf or bog standard elf or whatever, I mean, fill your boots. Yeah, no, exactly. There's, you, the the point they they made the changes in such a way that you don't lose or gain anything mechanically. It's just flavor. Right. Right. And, you know, if we're only talking flavor. Who cares? Yeah. Really, though? Uh, right. Uh, the other thing they added, too, which is a little neat, is you could just say, I don't want to be any of these ancestries or races. Uh, and you can basically make your own custom lineage. You can cr basically create your own ancestry from scratch. Uh, and it'd be similar to how the variant human works. You'll get a plus two to one stat. Uh, you'll get a feat choose between different things like you could pick dark vision but that means you don't get a skill proficiency but if you pick a skill proficiency you don't get dark vision yeah well i like that there's a trade-off then right so there's a bit of trade-off so you're making your custom thing uh the only real stick or like i guess rule they put on it is if you get a plus two plus two or plus one plus two uh you can't stack stats you can't min max that way mm -hmm. so if you get a plus two and a plus one they have to go on separate stats and what I'm most excited about, I didn't hear that you couldn't make a turtle with air coker wings. <laughs> they didn't say you couldn't do it, so it might still be possible yet. I don't know. For those who don't get the reference, so they go back and watch episode uh, one, I think it is, on our on our one, YouTube yeah. channel. Um, yeah, that's that's the big thing. Is apparently there's no there's no restrictions, so you can make a a flying turtle. I mean, there's some restrictions, but they didn't say you couldn't make a flying turtle. So I'm holding out hope. I'm going to run a one shot just so you can make it flying turtle. Woo. <laughs> he hacks. Yeah. Big time. Uh, so what about, um, uh, so sorry, just looking at some of the notes here. Um, so the homebrew is all fine. Uh, you can use that. Um, optional rules. You talked about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and stats. Yeah. You didn't mention about alignment though. Uh, here's here's, the, here's the, the pressing question is it okay to be evil I mean it's always okay to be evil in D&D &D, Paul <laughs> you do what you want but as in life if you choose to be evil there will probably be repercussions yes unless you're just powerful enough to deal with the repercussions as they come to mm -hmm. you yeah it's true with necromancy hashtag team hashtag. necro Team Necro. <laughs> Which brings me to the next part of uh, the news is the Hops and Dragons news. Uh, I don't believe we announced this last year, last episode. I believe uh, we hit our subscriber uh, point uh, break point where we got another emote slot. Um, but we only um, we were only able to get it up and approved for Sunday. So anybody who's here on Sunday to watch us uh, play Baldur's Gate 3 uh saw it and of course you've seen it as well here in the chat already but it hasn't been officially announced yet uh so what are the the new emotes that we have for all the subscribers please spam it right now in our chat um it is the team necro uh emote uh which we thought was a, a fitting fitting emote that we needed to have for spooky season in uh, in october here so Ooh, i love spooky season yeah big fan of spooky season in this household um, you so, saying spoopy? Spoopy, S P O O P Y. Oh, do you not like live on the internet? I, I apparently we live in different places on the internet. 
Oh, come on. We live in the same places. <laughs> and we're going to end that conversation now. <laughs> anyway. Moving anyway, on. Anyway. I don't drink. Oh, man. Ooh, is it hot in here? <laughs> it actually, it, it's not actually because it's after cooling down. It's only 22 degrees in here. And for I, know, I, I did see Tilly Mom and Tilly Dad in chat there a little while ago, so I got to be cool. <laughs> Hello, Tilly Mom and Tilly Dad. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Everybody in chat, be good. Yeah, my mom might be here. Come on, be cool. Mister and Mrs. Tilly are great. Are great people. Uh, what's up next? Is that the end of the news? Oh no, we got one other uh, part. Well, I guess this is a tiny one. We just want to bring it up uh, yeah. for people who don't live on the internet like the rest of us uh, on. D D Beyond this week, they released a couple custom critical role subclasses for the monk and the paladin. Uh the monk one has been out for a while. The uh way the cobalt soul that uh not Keyleth. Oh man, that's season one. That Beauregard is using. Uh and it gives it's actually a pretty powerful subclass for monks. It gives you the ability when you punch to read like get some information on the monster. And if someone misses you with a punch or attack, you can use your reaction to punch them back, which is pretty dope. That's the way of the uh, cobalt soul, right? It's the way of the cobalt soul. Yeah. Uh, but the new one, I guess came out this week, which is, I guess why they're posting it. Uh, no spoilers. Cause I haven't watched the latest episode either, but they released, uh, the order of the sea or something. Oath of the sea. Oath, Oath of the open of sea. The open sea. I guess this is for Ford in his paladinness. Uh gives you a couple ways to do use your divine uh abilities to summon a mist around you to obscure a vision that moves with you, which would be great for stealth missions. And uh fear of the titans, so you or the tides. So when you uh hit somebody, you can push them and make them take damage equal to your charisma modifier. It's pretty cool. Cool. That was uh Pally? Or monk? It's no, Pally, that, that yeah, was a Pally it's for one, Pally. Right? Cool. Ford, if, for anyone not what Ford's a sailor, so this kind of doubles down on his sea theme. That makes sense. And and the uh, the monk in Critical Role is knowledge. It's all about knowledge. The Cobalt Soul is a library, so she's very into investigating and that kind of stuff. So that the uh, the that subclass fits in that. If you want to be the investigator, kind of intelligent monk, mm-hmm. this is the way to go. Yeah, and can we just appreciate the uh, how badass the art is? I absolutely love oh, it. Oh, so dope. That's so good. dope. Yeah. I'm into it. Um, yeah, so she, you said she's been playing this for a long time, hey? Uh, I think, yeah, because she's been playing Beauregard since the beginning of Campaign 2 or two yes. for Critical Role, which yeah. has been out now for, geez, I think they're in their third year now or something. So yeah, she's been on that. I think they're level 13 or something now. She's been playing that since she was level 3. Oh, wow. Um, right? Yeah, no, for sure. So, so these are these are this is unofficial content, but it's available on D and D Beyond, right? That's correct. So people can build these characters if they want to build. Mm-hmm. Instead Give of them that. a try. Like they're they're not play tested, so they might be broken as all hell. Who knows? Check your DM. Yeah, but so is Five E Ranger. So true. I mean, Five E in itself is a little broken. That's why we love. It. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes it fun. It's not broken if you're having fun, right? Sure. Right? Sure. Right? I mean, the monsters are broken too, so.